Coming up, we are going to discuss what is new for Walt Disney World and for the Walt Disney Company coming up in uh, 2015. Plus, we're going to tell you what we're excited about this coming year. All that coming up on this episode of the Diz Unplugged. <laughs> This is the Diz Unplugged, episode number 765 for the week of January 6th, 2015. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello again and welcome everyone to the Diz Unplugged. We're coming to you live from the Bob Varley studio here in Orlando, Florida. I am your host, Dustin West. And I'm joined at the table by my good friends John Magi, Kevin Close, Jenny Lynn Knopp, Julie Martin, and back in our production nook we have the associate producer of the Diz Unplugged, Craig Williams, or as I like to call him, Craig T. Williams. And Yukon Cornelius. And Yukon Cornelius. You do look a little rude off the red nosed reindeer right now. Thank you. I call yes. him Quag because that's what Finley calls him. She doesn't say the R in his Quaig name. Or <laughs> Lars. Um, so yeah, uh, again, we're going to be talking about what's coming up for Disney in 2015. And today I didn't really want to limit it to just the theme park, so maybe we can explore a little more out from what we usually do. But all of this kind of stuff seems to tie back into the theme parks one way or the other, because especially with movies and films, you know, at some point we're going to have um, additions to the theme parks based on some of this stuff. So... Um, I want to start it out with some of the additions that we're looking forward to at Walt Disney World. One of the uh, big, big things is throughout this year and part of last year, we've been looking forward to the new additions to Downtown Disney and what will eventually become Disney Springs. Now, if you listen to the last new show that we just aired live, um, we talked a little bit about that, but I thought maybe we could expand a little bit. Uh, on this today. Pete especially was talking about his up and downs with the uh, parking situation there. But beyond that, you know, I'd like to talk a little bit about what's coming up and what's exciting us. Um, I know for me, I've been there a couple times recently and just seeing the marketplace and the first part of Pleasure Island that's next to the marketplace, kind of seeing some of the walls go up and some of the construction walls come down and what that's gonna look like with these cool, um, like riverside kind of brick buildings and that pedestrian bridge that they're putting in there. I think that's gonna help a lot. What do you guys think so far of, with what you've seen? Well, the whole project's not gonna be done until 2016, but the landing, which is the first phase of it, is supposed mm. to be done this year. We've got some really cool uh, restaurants that are you know, signed up to be done mm -hmm. this year, spring, summer, throughout. We mentioned them in the other episode, um, Morimoto Asia, which is Pan-Asian food, SDK Steakhouse, which is supposed to be the largest SDK in the country, I believe, two stories, and it's gonna have rooftop dining. Oh, so man. it should be somewhat impressive. Um, and then um, the Boathouse, which is gonna have a nautical theme. And then there's uh, also documents that have been filed to build uh, Aaron McKenna's Valentine Bakery, which is basically uh, a remake of Baby Cakes. That was there, the vegan bakery. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to you know that whole new vibe in that area, especially the STK that you said has rooftop mm -hmm. dining. It's, it's going to have a section with rooftop. Oh dining. my gosh, that that's kind of like Splitsville right now. Kind of has something similar to that, um, where they have that open air, huge veranda. Up STK there. better be way nicer than that. I, I, I think <laughs> STK is going to be nicer than. Split, I don't think so. they're going to have bowling in STK. <laughs> <laughs> or you don't have to rent shoes. You know what that reminds me of when we've spent our time in Europe and Italy, especially all those restaurants that would have, you know, a rooftop type um, uh, dining area, and if they could capture that vibe even just the slightest bit. That would be really, really cool. It'll just be nice to see the beginnings of it starting to finally emerge because last time I was at Downtown Disney, it, it felt like a um, rat maze to me. It does. It does. You just walk through these walls yeah. everywhere. Not only rat maze, but seeing that much construction is almost not so not Disney. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you never see the construction at Disney. I mean, just to see the buildings being half done 
if they deliver on what they're promising, Downtown Disney is going to be fantastic. The renderings have been great. Yeah. They had that 3D walkthrough on their site, which was fantastic. And they're just bringing in some really fantastic names. Yeah. I just hope it has more of um, a vibe like Disneyland has. They're Downtown Disney. Like, especially at night, where they have, like, little live bands and just seems like a lot going on. It's more of an adult feel. doesn't have to be, like, how it was when all the clubs were there, but um, just maybe, like, more family-oriented fun. You right. talk about they, they're bringing in a bunch of names. Part of me kind of misses the old Disney, where Disney was the name. Yes, I that, agree with you. know, you. Disney created their own restaurants in excitement. Yeah. The fact that they're bringing in Morimoto. I kind of hearken back to the days when, you know, Disney opened their own attractions and restaurants. And that... I can understand why you're saying that, because Disney's so good with its storytelling. And so when Disney had control over those things they were able to carry the storytelling throughout the different elements it just it had a a wider base so i miss that part of it too and disney did always do it right but the names i mean that doesn't that's just not the direction that disney seems to be going lately i mean starbucks and hollywood studios and blah 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 um but they've always had that that. that's not new i mean there's always been corporate sponsors um the woodway people mover was sponsored by goodyear Mm -hmm. so it's always been i mean the fact that starbucks is in the parks now is really not a new thing walt started doing that in 1955 there's been corporate sponsors all over the place yeah but that's actually but the starbucks doesn't it feel more like a starbucks it's starbucks product that's being sold well, there's Edie's ice cream at the end of Main Street. Yeah. And that doesn't right. seem to upset anyone. No, no. And I'm not saying that That's it does point. upset anyone. And I'm not, well, I'm not a huge Starbucks fan, but um, most people are excited about that. My point is just that that seems to be the direction that they're heading. And so if you're going to go in that direction, they are bringing in good names. And the theming right. of Downtown Disney is that it's a, uh, a place. Of that it's going to be Disney Springs and it's going to be this place that's sort of built up around the water. So naturally there would be other, you know, restaurants and there would be shops there that people would come and settle and open their shops. Exactly. It's like a waterfront town that has <clears throat> this, you know, the, that waterfront main street with all the little mm-hmm. shops. In a way, it's almost makes me think of Celebration here in Orlando. Um, or what but Celebration I'm, was supposed to be. Well, yeah, exactly. there you go. I'm actually on Kevin's side entirely on this. It's one of the major downfalls that I think happened in City Walk is that everything was basically licensed outside by a, another company and now they're finally starting to turn around. They still are pulling outside restaurants whenever they need to, but they're starting to become more reliant on actually making good food and setting up a nice atmosphere and going for original restaurants themselves. And I, as, as great as Disney Springs is going to be, it would be great if Disney had that belief in themselves that they don't need to pull in a Morimoto or someone That's exactly, else. Exactly, you're 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 making my point. I get, yeah. I get you. Yeah. yeah. And just real quickly to address what Julie said when you when you were talking about that compared to Disneyland's version of Downtown Disney, in my opinion, this will be the closest thing that they can get to that. Oh yeah. But with without being attached to the theme parks the way that that one is in Disneyland. It's not going to have that same vibe of, you know, everyone on Disney property is walking through there. People are going to have to make a choice now to go to Disney Springs. And I think more people are going to choose to do that. And I do hope that they do have that entertainment like you're talking about. Um, I want to move on to some of our annual events uh, to look forward to in 2015. In the news story that we did was um, the 15 things that Disney Parks blog thinks they're the reasons you should come to Disney uh, this year. Annual events was one of those, and some of these are also other uh, mentions on that list. We have the Flower and Garden Festival coming up uh, March 4th through May 17th, and um, I'm excited about that uh, in the same way we were talking about earlier that it's moved beyond the Flower and Garden Festival mm-hmm. now. But I also foresee that it's not going to be too much different than it was last year if i had to put my money on it and epcot never looks better and yeah. they, the their topiaries and their flower displays are always incredible so you know i realize that that adds an element to it but i don't think that's the reason to go right the reason to go see what they do with that park um another one that's going to open up a broader uh discussion is star wars weekends we hinted at this earlier star wars weekends is may 15th through uh, June 14th, throughout the month of May and June. Um, 
And that's, if you don't know what Star Wars Weekends is, I, is it just Saturday and Sunday or is it Friday, Saturday and Sunday? It's Friday, it's Friday Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, so every weekend, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, they'll have uh, special guests there from the different movies and the animated shows that they do. Um, there's a whole bunch of character meet and greets for Star Wars. The whole The whole park transforms into this, basically this whole Star Wars celebration. And we were alluding earlier that maybe this would be a good time for Disney to announce something about what they're doing in the future of Hollywood Studios. Uh, I think for Star that Wars. reason, Star Wars Weekends this year is going to be big. I mean, it's already packed out and crowded, wildly popular event that people do plan their vacations around. I think this year is going to be even more so with, you know, Episode 7 being released. Um, my opinion and I think it's something to look forward to other than the crowds I mean that's always a little bit tricky and challenging it's six months out from whenever the actual episode seven is going to be released there's already going to be more and more extended trailers starting to come out so we're going to see these characters I would wholeheartedly expect to see at least one or two uh, new characters that they're going to show in episode mm. seven to help promote that ahead of time. I hadn't even thought about it, that. If they don't, then it's not a big deal. Then next year will be the biggest reason to come back because then all of a sudden it's going to feature all these characters that you just saw in the movie before. But it, it's a great, easy way to market right before the movie. They do have a balancing act on their hands because on one hand, they could use this year's Star Wars weekends to promote episode seven. But at the same time, they may not be sorry either ready for that or want to give too much away you know leading into the movie's release and so it we could see that or we could see them being very secretive about this kind of stuff what i'd like to see is major announcements major announcements about the theme parks any kind of uh revealing information about the movies you know if possible um even though that's not that you know far away from the movie actually being released I'd, I'm really looking forward to Star Wars Weekends. This is one to keep your eye on simply because the movie's coming out. And um, I don't know. What are you guys What are you guys thinking about uh, with the movie? Any excitement there for anybody? Oh, I'm so excited about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not even like a diehard uh, Star Wars fan. My son is. Um, but I, I know enough people that, you know, are diehards. And so I've kind of absorbed some mm-hmm. Star Wars culture because of that and um i i i'm looking forward to it the trailers look great the yeah. special effects look great now it's december 18th that it's uh, coming out of this year 2015 almost said next year um and it's uh, star wars the force awakens and as of right now there's only been uh, one trailer the teaser trailer that reveals i think it's like eight shots of some of the new characters and doesn't really give anything away about the plot. Um, as a huge Star Wars fan, no. I'm very much looking forward to it. I think already it looks better than what I've known of the last three films that were released. I don't know. What do you think, John? I'm excited to see it. Anything Star Wars is cool. Yeah. This is what we grew up with. This was, you know, the the film that changed our lives. It changed cinema that we know. So anytime they do anything, even the bad Star Wars movies are still good. Mm-hmm. Even the weird stuff they're doing on TV now that's... So weird. <laughs> it's like even that's something that I eat up. So, I mean, how can you not look forward to it? And then there's also the idea that, you know, it, even if it's bad, it's something that people are going to talk about because it's bad. So, you know, it's going to be great. And they're going to add it to the parks. Yeah. Iger's already said it's going to be a presence in the park. So, Do you I think no that secrets. it's going to affect Star Wars weekends with... Uh, more of the park being shut down as it has, you know, losing so many attractions is the park. It seems like the park might have trouble absorbing the crowds as well. That's that's absolutely true, though the ones that have been shut down never really absorbed that many people to begin with. So losing the backlot tour never took too many people away yeah, from the I main walkways. That's true. In the park, I mean, it did. It, the capacity was there for that. But, yeah, but um, I guess you're right. When people go to these things, they're always in line to see the celebrities or mm-hmm. for the special shows that are there, or they're in line for that that insanely long line for that mall where they have all the merchandise. Yes, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. When, during Star Wars weekends, the the vast majority of the people that are in the, that park that day are mm. there for that purpose. Yeah, they're not there for the attractions. And, in fact, and we've said it on the show a million times. If if you're planning your vacation in that time frame and again it's may 
15th to June 14th. If you have no interest in Star Wars weekends, plan your Hollywood Studios day around that. Don't go that day because it's just a madhouse. Insanely busy. Yeah. Um, some of the other annual events that are going on this year, we have Gay Days, um, six, or, I'm sorry, June 2nd to June 8th. We also have Night of Joy, September 11th through the 12th. I'd be so much ex- more excited about Gay Days if it was in January. <laughs> Why can't they move it to the third week of January? Do it right in the middle of the summer. Oh, my God. It's so hot and so miserable. And, I mean, there's a lot of crowds there that time, yeah. too. And the fact that it's that week long, you gave a week of dates... It's really kind of a misnomer. Right. There's really one gay days at Disney yeah. World, and that's it's that. It's the first Saturday in June at the Magic Kingdom. Everything else takes place. That's the big day. Stuff. Yeah. Um, again, night. night of, oh, sorry. I say, a night of joy. I've never been. It's not something that. It's a hard ticketed been. event that yeah. mostly you know youth groups and student groups mm-hmm. go yes. to. Yeah. Um, and so that's again September 11th through the 12th. These things, I predict this year, are going to be kind of similar to what they were last year, um, but they're worth mentioning in terms of annual events that are coming up. And something that's missing from your list that we talked about. Go ahead, Julie. I'll let you do it. Festival of the Masters. Festival of the Masters. If they don't bring it back... I seriously am going to pick it. I will go there and tie chain myself to oh, the, the... I don't time. know. What do I chain myself to? The Cirque du Soleil area? <laughs> exactly. Chain yourself to a smelly clown. And yeah. The food truck. For clarification, I did have that on my list. But I apologize. It's under, it's under a section, well, what we're hoping to see. <laughs> they took it away because of construction, and I know because of the space that's needed, but they could have just downsized it. Well, they're doing it while well, just moved it. Yeah, They moved still it. moved the actual like art that was commissioned for some of like the Yellow Shoes group, like Will Gay. Mm-hmm. and uh, Joe Kaminsky, they still did their art for it, and they just sold them in all of the Art of Disney stores. But, but if you wanted a, that handcrafted the handcrafted art, I know. But they were they were still planning on having it. It had to have come down to a last second decision that someone said, we're not going to do it, because they paid all these people to do this Which art that just yeah. got released in stores instead. So My favorite part of it is the Folk Arts Festival. I folk love yeah. I usually mm-hmm. We usually buy something there. For those who don't know, Festival of the Masters is a weekend-long event at Downtown Disney. Most of it's on the west side, I I believe. They have chalk art on the marketplace marketplace side. It's an art festival. Um, And they have tents set up. It almost looks like a little tent city. And each tent has um, It's mostly artists. a lot of local artists from mm-hmm. in Florida. Some come from further away, but most of them are local. Lots of it's handmade jewelry. Yeah. Um, oh, is it really? Yes. I didn't realize that. Yeah, you There's can get also, like honorable mention. You can win certain, you know, I'm not for the prize, ribbons but prizes ribbons and, for sure. Oh, okay. It's a judge dart show. There's also mm-hmm. Disney artists, uh, artists that will make guest yes. appearances mm-hmm. there. Um, and it's just, it gives, a, it gives a neat, interesting, unique vibe to especially the West Side um, when that's going on, I'm especially looking forward a couple years ahead to see what how they could incorporate that in the new Disney Springs. I was going to say, I think the new theme of Disney Springs is well suited for that festival. Mm-hmm. Yes. They also the restaurants put out a booth, and you know you can buy sample sized portions of the different foods and stuff. It's kind of it's like a really art. fun day. It really I, it's is. my favorite. It's I the was thing very I was, sad to oh. see it not be there this year. We were devastated. Not just sad. We were devastated. <laughs> Disney. <laughs> That's a big that's a big family event for you guys. Well, there's also yes. a bunch well, of... Well, usually we get to do it one day as a family and one day just the two of us. Mm-hmm. So it's really it's quite nice. It's also, it's like a, a perfect time to visit. Food and Wine Festival is over. Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party starts usually that weekend. And the Festival of the Masters. And I believe there's a marathon. And usually the weather is perfect. Right. It's usually not too hot and not too cold. <clears throat> Some of the other events we're looking forward there to. There are no other events. It's Festival of the Masters or nothing. <laughs> I had no segue for this whatsoever. Um, what we're hoping to see again. What um, you know is not already on the books. Uh, love to see Harambe Nights again. Have, have any of you been to Harambe Nights yeah. uh, this past year? No, it was great. What would you think of it? I loved it. It was just you know this one little section of Animal Kingdom. Have your own little. It felt like a private party of sorts everything out there in the streets and then we saw that fabulous you know show that they did the storytelling of the lion king well i don't think craig was that impressed with it um i was actually gonna say the opposite it was probably my favorite day in a disney park all year really Uh, yeah the the show although we had terrible seats that's um, what i was remembering not because any seat in the house (laughs) was bad we had an air conditioner 
that was like broken was and leaking loud. and running. And we talked about it on the show that we covered it. So we couldn't really hear that well. But the whole party atmosphere there was great. Uh, just, uh, I mean, it was it was an open bar. So those who like to drink had a good time. You could have unlimited lamb chops. I think Corey had like 60. Uh, we <laughs> just, ate and they did entire face. lamb. Yeah, I don't think anyone else did it, but they had like face a painting. Thing. I really you could have like unlimited that. lamb chops. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, they had the uh, the face painting, and mm -hmm. then you could like I picked up a whole pineapple and just kind of <laughs> joked with them like I'm gonna take this, and they're like okay, whatever. We should have had a shopping cart. We all walked yeah. away with like armfuls of produce. <laughs> One of the reasons I feel like if uh, it will return, if not something very similar to it, is that in all of their gearing up toward Avatar Land and their nighttime show. They're, they're moving Animal Kingdom into more of a full day experience. Oh, they already said that. They, yeah. They're going to make Animal Kingdom a nighttime park eventually. Exactly. And that's why I think we'll see something like this. And I would, I would actually hope that that would be more and more of a regular thing and not just a during the summer thing. Yeah. I agree. That, was, that event was a huge success in my opinion. And I mean, they were selling out their tickets for, for it, weren't they? They oh, were. Yeah. Harambe nights? A lot of the nights sold out. I think it'll be a little different just for the fact that... Uh, Lion King was also celebrating its 20th anniversary, so that was part of the special inclusion of the show. But maybe it'll come back just with a different theme, something else still African feeling. It just had a really good energy to it. You enjoyed being there. Yeah. And along those same lines, and Pete mentioned this earlier in the news show, um, Villains Unleashed at Hollywood Studios. Uh, as he said, the idea was fantastic. It was just not organized they correctly. Their execution, execution yeah. was was not that great. But I, in the last five years or so, I haven't been to a, a nighttime party event at one of these theme parks that felt quite like that. It had the coolest vibe to it. Everyone was there for that reason. Everyone uh, was in costume, excited. And it just had this cool party vibe to it in, in a way that I feel like the Christmas party and the Halloween party, you know, go for. But that one was a little more specific. So the people that were there were even more excited. And I, I'd love to see that again. And you could tell that the guests were into it. Everybody coming in their own um, costumes as the villains or their variations of it. It, uh, it was a lot of fun. They just need to figure out how to manage the crowds better. Yeah. I mean, the, the, they have to limit the number of tickets. Yeah. Yeah, the like they do for the party. Mhm. Mm especially the character lines were outrageous. If you yeah. wanted to see all the characters, that was going to be your entire night you, and you still wouldn't be able to see all the you characters. You should not have to wait two and a half hours to see Maleficent. No. That's just ridiculous. No. No. Um let's see what else do we have here? Oh, also at Hollywood Studios, there's probably a good possibility that we're going to see some more Frozen stuff this year. What do you guys think about Especially frozen Shocker. summer fun. <laughs> any any opinions on that? I don't think about I that at all. Any of those <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Something I try it's, not to think. It's about. not something I would attend. It's just not something. I, I think if people are still interested, if it still draws a crowd, I say go for it. I think adding special events makes the parks feel fresh every time. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something new to do. So I think it's great. It's not my thing, but. Now, Frozen Summer Fun, it's, it's free additions to your day at yep. the park. It's just uh, the park is accented in different areas with the Frozen stuff. And they had some really good ideas, and there were some parts of it that I actually really enjoyed. I liked the addition of the sing-along. I thought that was a great family event. Everyone who was in that theater got into it. Um, I thought that it was cool that there was ice skating in yeah. Hollywood Studios. I thought that was very creative. You could go in there, and they say build a snowman but it was more like a ice popsicle man <laughs> with the compacted ice shavings but um you know it was it was cute it wasn't a showstopper but um you know it was cute we were out at disneyland one time and they had set up an ice skating rink and around it they had sh set up this little shopping village with a little um what, downtown Disney? Yeah, little huts. I don't know what else to call them. Yeah. Kiosks. Yeah. Kiosks and they had food and 
some of the Christmas or the, some of the Christmas ornaments on our tree came from there. Oh, yeah. And I thought it was great. It was hot chocolate. And I think was, one uh, of the things oh, sorry, that one of the things that you, you kind of realize is that Disney doesn't have to do this. Right. This is not something they have to do to bring crowds in. The crowds are going to show up anyway. So I think it's great that they add this stuff, and especially you know addressing someone's desires to see more Frozen stuff. My hope would be that whatever they're doing with Frozen, including the uh, Frozen Summer Fun stuff, finds a more permanent home. That it's not just these one-off kind of deals. That it's not just you know we're transforming that that backstage area into a, a, a skating rink for a couple months. Let's if if we're really going to embrace it, do it in a more they permanent are. way. That's a function in Norway. They're building a home. <laughs> yeah, that's a function of them not knowing that this Julie's movie was going to be this popular or what's going to be the next big hit. Are you not happy about Norway? I mean, I'm going to go. I have children. Hello, but yeah, I still am a little ticked off. <laughs> I reigned in the language for that. <laughs> I, I don't have anything to say about that, but uh, one of the things that I hope that they might start adopting this year is actual uh, real benefits to being an annual pass member, like uh, little exclusive <laughs> events that actually happen after park hours, stuff like that. Just little oh, things. To, mm-hmm. And that don't cost like dream. an arm and a leg. Because a lot of times those events can cost over $100 per person. Well, at Disneyland, they have events where if you're in the if you follow their Disneyland annual pass Twitter, then they'll announce like random pop-up events while during the park hours. It might be go watch a Disney movie all together or something, but it's a little perk that only annual pass holders can get. And it would be great to see something like that here because we have so many annual pass holders and they want even more Florida annual pass holders. Mm-hmm. That's all we heard about in December from them is annual pass, annual pass, annual pass. Mm -hmm. So start giving something besides just discounts and uh, just make make little fun events happen. Well, along those lines, let's talk about the 24-hour events that uh, we've experienced, specifically one last year, earlier in the year, was their 24-hour Rock Your Disney side event. And as John mentioned in his news story earlier, they're still embracing that hashtag Rock Your Disney side and all their other hashtags, I'm sure. Um, but uh, what would you guys like to see in a 24-hour event this year? Naps. Recliner. I wouldn't go. Uh, to be honest, I won't ever go to a 24-hour event. I'd... The only thing that appeals to me about yeah. those is the possibility of going, actually showing up later and being in a park at later hours. I don't oh, really? Right. Well, not, not I'd like there. to be asleep. Well, there's multiple camps <laughs> in I that. I take a nap. Some well. people feel like, you know, to really experience it, you have to be there no, the whole 24 hours. Some people just want to do that, be right. there late at night when it's, you know, has a slightly different feel to it. And a lot of people there wear pajamas. That's like the big thing. Oh. Um, everybody comes Yikes. in uh, pajamas. Some people come in costumes, but mostly the big thing is uh, the, the pajamas. I love the 24-hour events. I love watching the sunrise in the Magic Kingdom. That is one of the coolest things I've ever been a part of. Um, and I wasn't there for the whole 24 hours. I just showed up at like six o'clock in the evening and stayed till six o'clock in the morning. And it's still 12 hours, but you know, it was, uh, it was really cool. I hope that they do multiples, uh, this year. And, um, my, I've said this before and I stand by this. We're going to see Disney eventually go to a 24 hour cycle. You think so? That, That parks will be open 24 hours a day. That's what some of this is prepping people for. I think the only problem is the the cleanup and the yeah any kind of maintenance that has to be done. Well, I don't think they'll do they'll do the whole park twenty four hours. They may shut down sections of the park, but you'll see. I'm looking forward to the sixtieth anniversary, and we're going to be there. Yep. Yeah, we're going to actually be there on that day, and it's going to be a global celebration. So they'll, right. they'll do stuff here, which should be cool. As long as they don't bring Cinderella Bration back, that's what yeah. they did for the fiftieth anniversary. Is you know they. They gave a gift to all the theme parks across the world. Oh, yeah. They, they, uh, we got Lights, Motors, Action out yeah. of that. Um, I don't know. I like it when they do stuff like that. Recognizing mm-hmm. the anniversaries. Yeah, I think they should not recognize all the milestones. Exactly. I don't know what the next one would be for Disney World. 50. 50 at 2021. 21. I can do math. I'm smart. <laughs> Toe grows. But yeah. I, <laughs> Toe grows. That's an inside joke that's going to stay inside. Um, 
24 hour events. <laughs> Can't wait. Um, another interesting uh, note about uh, upcoming event this year the Tower of Terror 10 miler marathon is not happening in 2015. No reason was given. Darn. Speculation <laughs> is that construction will be taking place as part of the Hollywood Studios oh. expansion. Makes so, sense. That involved a lot of backstage areas at Hollywood Studios. It was, you know, and it was really, it was a cool event, but that's not going to be happening for that. So I'm, that brings us to Hollywood Studios. I know we're not going to see anything in the next year, probably. Have you been in Hollywood Studios? Sorry, go ahead. I don't know what you said. That brings us to Hollywood Studios, and I know we're not going to see anything. Uh, in the next year as a result, but we are going to be seeing a lot of construction going on. And I thought that's at least worth mentioning um, for your plans. What we're looking forward to or what we're not looking forward to in the next year is Hollywood Studios is going to be under a lot of construction. Part of that they don't take out the audio sound show. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Drew Carey. One of the things that that article kind of said to me was that we read at the news story, the news during the news segment, was that, listen, all of this other stuff is happening later but you should still come this year. <laughs> I don't think people think that way. I don't people people think about, well, I'm going to wait and save my vacation until Avatar Land is open or until Star Wars is open. I think people want to be here every year. So yeah. I think that's Disney's short-sightedness and thinking that that's how people vacation. Yeah. Now, I do want to talk briefly uh, about some of the movies that are coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, JL, I know you have a list, and we can yeah. compare lists. Well, all of the ones that are being released this year, and we can talk about the ones that we want to, but Cinderella's, I think, first up. The, the live, live action. action. Which I'm looks amazing. Yeah, very looking for. Now, that's not Tim Burton, I don't think, no. but it no. has that look It has a it. Helena Bonham Carter in it and right. Kate Blanchett, and I don't know what his real name is, but Rob Stark. Oh, right. I'd watch it just for From that Game reason. of Thrones, ah. Rob Stark plays yeah. Prince Charming. Like, yeah, and just, yes. It's a uh, Kenneth Branagh. Branagh. Oh, Branagh. Yeah. Branagh. Yeah, no one Branagh. knows how to say it. Kenneth Branagh. Yeah. Branagh. I have really enjoyed the live action films that Disney has been, been producing Me about too. the fairy tales. Um, so, and this one looks like it's going to just be, you know, on on par with the standard that they've already set. The girl playing Cinderella is actually in Downton Abbey as well. For Downton, she? Abbey, uh, Downton Abbey fans. And, uh, it was interesting watching the trailer for Cinderella, and then we all went to go see Into the Woods, and then there's uh, Anna Kendrick playing Cinderella, and now I have two versions of Cinderella in my head. <laughs> Disney's so how does, with Cinderella. How does Disney um, sort of bring in the fact that now you have a different-looking Cinderella? Mm-hmm. The Cinderella in the trailer is very different mm-hmm. from the Cinderella that's the cartoon character. It's been that way with all the live action. You know, Al, Tim Burton's Alice is very mm-hmm. different from the cartoon Alice. Aurora uh, and Maleficent. Maleficent is very, Angelina Jolie is very different from the cartoon. So no, that, you, I think she was perfect. No, I think she almost looks exactly like her without the dress. Yeah. big cheekbones. Yeah. I know. But what I'm saying, in the parks, they play them differently. Yeah. yeah. You, you will see Angelina's version of Maleficent in some places, and then in other places, you'll see the traditional cartoon. Maleficent, which has basically got some kind of rubber her nose on her face. I would imagine that the Cinderella that we're used to seeing walking around in the parks is going to stay the same yeah, based will, on this. Sure. And unless they do any kind of specific thing for this I movie. I can't imagine changing the classic no. characters yeah. in the park. I, just I don't think they'll rid, they'll rid the park entirely of the traditional characters at all. But I do think we'll see the movie versions every once in a while splattered in here and there as we've seen with Maleficent. I've never seen a Maleficent that didn't have a green face. <laughs> yeah, she's I've only she's made appearances. Seen, has she? I've only mm-hmm. seen the traditional one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah well, no, the other one has made appearances. One of the films I have on my list is Monkey Kingdom, which is the new uh, oh, it does look cute. Disney nature film. Uh, I wanted to bring this up. My way of relating this to the parks is when I worked at the Wildlife Express train, when you first leave the train, there are these four posters that, that every time they have a new Disney nature film. They've updated them. Except when I worked there, it was still the uh, big cats, and they had already moved on to the bears. They'd already moved on to the uh, chimpanzee film. They never replaced it. So maybe for this one, the well, final monkey. No, to me, the monkey kingdom, it's going to be like visiting King Louis' place where he lived, but in real life. Oh, uh, that would, <laughs> yeah. Do you guys like the Disney nature films, or have you seen them? I yes, no. I like I, the idea. I remember them growing up as a kid. I don't. I haven't gone to the movies to see the. Well, they were the wide world. They were the uh, 
Disney thing. True life, shorts, true life shorts. adventures. That, yeah. yeah, I hate it. These are more like um, the. Uh, they follow a family. The like BBC an animal family. Yeah, um, it's yeah. Well, here. the first one they did, Earth. That was literally they just took all the clips from uh, Planet Earth, Planet Earth, and they re-edited it into a uh, single story. And then they came out on their own. Now they're getting new stories, and they try to get celebrities to narrate it and get uh, family aspects, like Julie said. They're good. While we're talking about we monkeys like and live action, the live action Jungle Book is supposed to be released as well. Is it really? Yeah. That would be so mm-hmm. awesome. They're, they're supposed to be incorporated. There's a, a is little that boy. Is Disney though? Yeah. Yes. They is tried it? it once before yeah. in like the mid 90s. Yeah. That this was a one sequel. has a, a little boy who plays Mowgli, and there's supposed to be motion capture animals that act around him. Sure. My understanding is that almost it was all filmed on green screen. Yes, nothing, because there's a lot of right. motion He's capture. Like pretty much the only real thing in yep, it. Yep, that's that's correct. Wow. I'm surprised we don't see more Baymax in the parks. Yeah. And in the parades. Apparently he's very popular. I still have yet to see Big Hero what? 6. I'm ready for it to come out on DVD. <laughs> Finley asked all the time, when can I watch it again? I'm like, it's not It's yet. a really cute movie. <laughs> February 3rd. Really February 3rd, thank you. Tell Finley. I will. <laughs> it's, one of, it's one of those films, Big Hero 6 is one of those films that did really well at the box office, but it mm-hmm. didn't have that same buzz that Frozen did. No right. songs. There's, and no it's songs. Not, no princesses. Yeah. <laughs> what else is on your list? Avengers 2, while we're talking about superheroes. Age of Ultron. You know, it's... When will Avengers come to the parks? Why? When? Universal? What's happening, Craig? Answer my question. Well, Avengers are already in the parks and on the cruise ships and everywhere they can put them. Yeah, they just can't put them in. In the kids' uh, club, there's an Iron Man who, like, flashes every ten minutes. Whoa, what? I want to see... I want to see Iron Man. Maybe it was Captain America. I kind of flashed. I don't know. He's like inside of this capsule. I think the definition in the, in the of the word flash club. is what's <laughs> throwing you. <laughs> no, he's like, like huh? in this capsule. I'm not kidding. Like a big manly version, you know, like I guess like a true male version. I think it's Iron Man. Or maybe it's Captain America. I don't know. I think it's that you're saying manly and flash. But no, it flashes, all at the same like a loud time. noise happens. And like all this flashing is going on and he lights up. Yeah. It scared he, me every he's time illuminated. that I was in there when it happened. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this movie yeah. so much. I don't know if you guys have seen the trailer for it yet. Mm-hmm. Yes, the special effects look amazing. And of course I you've got that classic my, epic story. my excitement about a movie with Into the Woods. <laughs> I kind of have to wait. This is where I get even. I was gonna right. say. These are I will pay for Disney Into movies. the Woods the rest of this year. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to go see that new Star Wars movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you will. Uh, with the Avengers, it's sort of you have built in excitement. You have built in box office. It's going to be a big yeah. hit. And it's just, they'll just continue it through the parks. The monorail will be Avengers 2 and, you know. All that stuff they do. Apparently, this one sets up the whole Civil War storyline that is going to take place in the Phase 3 portion of Avengers. And I'm very much like, if, if you guys know <laughs> about the uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I'm really looking forward to this. And as yeah. much as they could possibly bring this into the theme parks, I would love to see. You know the old Charlie Brown see. cartoon? Wow, wow, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anything else about Avengers, guys? Uh, well, we have another Marvel one that's coming out, Ant-Man. Ant-Man, which is Paul Rudd, right? I am yes, not and exactly this, they're sure, going to show the uh, trailer tonight during Mrs. Carter? No, that's Agent, Agent Carter. Carter. Agent Carter. Oh. I was like, that's Beyonce. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mrs. Carter. <laughs> Ant-Man is a bizarre uh, superhero. He can just shrink to the size of an ant. I don't, I don't like ants. I don't know, but... We have a problem with ghost ants in our house. <laughs> one that uh, everyone has is a call superhero. exterminator man. One of the movies that has a little more to do with the theme parks is uh, Tomorrowland on May twenty mm-hmm. second, and that's starring George Clooney and um, is directed by um, Brad Bird. Brad Bird, who did not only Mission Impossible: Ghost Protocol, but he did a lot of the Pixar films, The Incredibles, Ratatouille. Yes. So I'm. I know Kevin. You had said earlier in the other show that you have no clue what the. It looks pretty, but you have no clue what it's about. Well, the preview that they showed just before Into the Woods. It's you know it doesn't give you a lot of information, and I didn't read a lot about it, so I don't know what it is. It seems to be about some sort of alternate reality. Yeah. Well. Trailer. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the premise of the story is actually right up your alley, Kevin. It's based on uh, the 1964 World's World Fair. Oh, okay. And, I'm in. Um, they had to. They actually recreated portions of it in uh, up in Canada to try to make a most realistic representation of what the fair looked like. Um, 
because the the boys i i'm sorry if i'm getting the details wrong but the boys at the fair and buys a token for a ride and then all of a sudden that flashes into that alternate universe and it's well, it, during the preview this girl is getting out of prison and they hand her her stuff back and one of the things is this little button and she says yeah. that's not mine and she goes to pick it up and she's in a cow field <laughs> but, but the whole city of tomorrowland is you know, I know that until she turns around. She keeps putting the button down and picking it up and putting it back, and you keep flashing back and forth into the cow field. So, from that, I think, yeah, I'm not calling. But if it's about the World's Fair, I think it would be. Interesting. Wait for the full trailer. It's, it's one of those things that I don't know enough about it to be excited about it. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's another one of those things that's tricky. How do you integrate something like that into the park? They didn't do it with any of the other live action well, take a look attraction at, movies. Take a look at the Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, I. No, that's true. You know, they've got. corrected. They well, brought Johnny Depp into it. Maybe there'll be just some design elements, maybe that they could bring. I'm surprised the they existing. didn't put Eddie Murphy. I was just gonna say thank God they didn't bring Eddie Murphy. <laughs> what do you want, Craig? The big, you sorry, what do I want? The what biggest want? reason why it incorporates the parks is that they needed to film at the attractions that were in the World's Fair. So they came to Carousel of Progress and they filmed at one point. They filmed a lot out at Disneyland at Small World. And so the question though is, how do they integrate that back into the park? They're not going to. I uh, can't imagine why, unless they put up Tomorrowland posters on the outside of those attractions and say, as featured in Tomorrowland. <laughs> I doubt they. They do might, that. unless they. It's a really big hit, and that girl who's from Under the Dome is all of a sudden an animatronic. <laughs> in Stitch's Great Escape or something. A few other mentions that I want to throw out there. Of course, Pixar has some new movies. Yeah, um, Inside Out and The Good Dinosaur. Yep. Inside Out looks fun. It looks uh, really That trailer cool. was really cool. Is that the one where you're in the brain of a 13-year-old yeah. girl? It reminds me of Cranium Command that yeah. used to be at um, Wonders of Life at Epcot. I'm never excited about Pixar movies before they come out. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't excited about Big Hero 6. I actually thought it was a superhero movie. I thought it was like, you know... Six Avenger kind of things, <laughs> but once they come out and you start hearing about them, they get become more. This yeah. this screams integration in the parks. Yeah, this movie just screams that they will do something. They could easily make a ride out of that right. or something. Well, like Our a Kim Possible thing. And the characters kind of... everywhere. They they remind me of almost like the Minions, like mm-hmm. these cute little soft characters that are going to be. You know, those stuffed animals are going to be everywhere. Um, so I want to get away from the movies for a little bit and wrap up, unless we have anything else, wrap up on Disney Cruise Line. I know you had a few things. Yes, I want to go to... before that. I'm waiting okay. for the 2016 Adventure by Disney dates. I'm hoping for someplace new and exciting. Mm-hmm. We're hoping that they're going to point towards Asia. Well, 2015, there are some new stuff going on. We're actually going to try to do one. We talked about doing the Nashville trip. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. And they've, they've uh, already announced Spain and Tuscany which is different than the Italy trips that they still have. But 2016 dates will be released in May of 2015. Mm-hmm. So we're hoping for something something new and exciting. Not that anyone you would go on wouldn't be exciting, right. but I'm hoping that they will go someplace different. And so along those lines, there's some new locations for Disney Cruise Line. Who wanted to talk about that? All I, all I can say is the cruise line's headed to Norway and Iceland this year for the first time. I, mm, I I'm wonder a who's going to be on that ship. <laughs> they already uh, are. <laughs> on the now, anyway. I just want you to know that this was not new information. Yeah. This has been released for quite yeah. a while. But and those new trips. They're new trips. Right. right. But those trips have sold for quite a while, so it's not like there's a lot of availability. I was going to say, one, popular. Yeah, one of the things you have to watch out for is these trips are pretty much booked, and now yeah. you're paying the highest pricing for them. I have a feeling you're going to see people cancel as we get closer. Yeah. That the final payment date. They're the very expensive. Um, one of the cruise line trends that we keep reading about is the push towards Asia for different cruise lines. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that sometime in the future we see. And along the lines of what you said about Adventures by Disney, we should see the rest of 2016 come out in 2014. So Wait. 15? Do you mean the rest of 2018? The 2016 date? <laughs> Correct. Okay, well, it's already 2015, so we're not going to see them in 2014. I mean 2015. <laughs> Next, this year, I am looking forward to the rest of 2016 Leave that man days. alone. It's only the six. And how fast was the train <laughs> headed south going? <laughs> now, I'm, I'm sure we didn't cover nearly everything that is coming in 2015 to both the parks and just Disney in general. Is there anything we that we didn't the mention? the resorts. Okay. What would you like to talk about at the resort? Poly Reverbs. Okay. Poly Reverbs. <laughs> Reverb, new, another new inside joke. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought it was person when she first mentioned it. We got to talk about Poly Reverbs. I thought, I don't know her. This is, <laughs> what, 
This is why I asked. Does anybody else have anything else? So yes, let's talk about the poly refurbishment a little bit. Um, we don't know the date of when it's all going to be said and done, but it should be sometime this year. Hopefully spring. Yeah. And I know we've seen some stuff, and anybody can see right now how they're doing the, um, what are they called? The, the bungalows. Bung bungalows, yeah, out on the lake. Thank you. <laughs> they look like storage, ut storage sheds out in sticks. They're not, what I've seen so far, they're not overly appealing from the water. They look I like double inside, rides they, on I'm sticks. Sure I see. I think part of the thing is they're not supposed they're to be appealing from the water. They're supposed to be appealing from the inside yeah. as you look out. I mean, even the ones like that I look at because I dream of going to some of those places like Tahiti or Fiji where they have these. They are not like fancy on the outside. When yeah, you but go they inside, look. They look appealing. I've actually seen the ones in um, Bora Bora. And on they look, there, they are appealing from the outside. They look like you want to go into them. But they're also made out of bamboo, right? I mean, they kind of have that look to yeah, them. Yeah, they have like an island feel. Right. Yeah. And these, in my opinion, don't. But I saw, I haven't seen them in quite a while. So I'm hoping they sort of. They look like a miniaturized version of the longhouse look mm -hmm. that they go. So it has that, you know, triangular roof. Okay, now when I, the last time I saw them, it looked like. As I said, it looked like a double wide up yeah, on Because they didn't finish them. They weren't yeah. finished then. Yeah, because I thought they looked nice. Um, I'm not sure when the lobby's supposed to be ready, but that I know that's coming soon, right? Um, the lobby's, the lobby's already, already done. Okay, ready. that's okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> I knew it was something long. I haven't been there yet. Has anybody seen that yet? Some pictures of it. I've seen pictures of yeah. it. Yeah. So excited about that. I mean, that opens that whole thing uh, wide up. And I will still mm -hmm. miss the, the water gardens. I love the I water. I like the water garden, too, but I can yeah. see how it was sort it of in the so way. It opens up so much real estate. Yeah. A lot of room in the middle. Mm -hmm. When we were younger, we used to stand up on top with pennies, and they had those giant drums. And we used to throw pennies over and try and hit the drum. <laughs> People used to do that uh, when I worked at Expedition Everest lobby. too. Anyway, so yeah, pens. no, I can understand why they did it, but I just I love that I love the water garden, so I'm gonna miss that. But the but the pictures do look really nice. It's a very classy feel. Well, we're gonna be over there this week. I can't mm -hmm. wait to see mm -hmm. what's, you know, f you know, in this phase already been done, and they're rebranding this whole thing as the Polynesian Village. And it looks like it's going to be really cool. The number one thing I'm looking forward to there, obviously, is the Grog Grotto, the uh, Trader Sam's. And we it's funny. I have at my house, I have um, some vintage glasses from the early 70s mm -hmm. that have the old logo on them that say the D Disney's Polynesian Village. There's one in here somewhere along those lines. There's something in here. <laughs> we have so many artifacts. But, of course, the Trader Sam's, for anybody who's been out to Disneyland in California, the Trader Sam's over at the Disneyland Resort, focuses primarily on a Jungle Cruise and uh, Adventures Club type theme, Tiki Room, that kind of stuff. This is going to be a more nautical theme, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea being its main influence. And uh, I'm just... I, that has that kind of steampunk look to it. I'm, I'd be mm -hmm. interested to see what they do with it. Yeah, so excited about that. And we're obviously going to keep you updated with anything Polynesian related. And uh, so... I'm going to ask again. Any Anything else I'm yeah, missing? Yeah, we have one more, or I have one more thing, right. which is rumor, but pretty. Uh, it's pretty solid rumor. The Character Breakfast coming to be our guest mm -hmm. restaurant. I'm looking forward to that. I think that would be very popular. I um, think it's going to be I can't be believe very, it wasn't there already. Well, they, that, they didn't plan for it to yeah. already be there. They don't even have a breakfast at this point. No. It's just lunch and dinner. No, and it is a rumor, but it's a pretty solid rumor that Character Breakfast is coming to be our guest. Oh, thank God. That would be so popular. We should see it this year. Cool. This isn't new, but I hope to ride Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, finally. That's your New Year's resolution. <laughs> Basically. It's fun. Me and my kids. They'll enjoy it. Because <laughs> they're big enough now. Oh, they would definitely enjoy it. It's, yeah. it's perfect for kids. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for us uh, this week and for this episode. We've talked about what we're looking forward to, so let's do it. Let's, uh, let's bring in the new year with some of these great things that we want to do. Oh, you didn't tell me I actually had to do things. <laughs> yes, you have to do them all. Oh, no. What are we going to do? All right, well, thank you guys for uh, jumping in the conversation and talking with me. Had a lot of fun. Uh, we will see you next week for another edition of the Diz Unplugged. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.